Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Monday, July 25th, 2022. And today I just basically pick up where I left off the last time. And this is reconditioning the intake manifold part two. So this is where I take that and we put the two together, right? So we end up with this point. Now I don't, I'm not putting the sensors and stuff back on because I don't think you should do that until you actually put this intake manifold back on the vehicle. Because you noticed uh, in a previous video, I had broken that off. And before I reassemble, uh, you know, these, uh, the manifolds, the first thing I do in this video is I check the, the upper intake manifold for warpage. And then we test our, I do, I test the, the throttle position sensor and I make sure, you know, it's functioning properly. And then I finally remove that stupid washer. You guys remember that washer? Man, that thing was driving me nuts. It was epoxy to the upper intake manifold. Uh, so for now, I'm just putting, you know, everything into a box as far as, you know, the, the sensors and the gaskets and the hoses. You know, there's no sense in, in, in putting any of that on until you assemble, until you put it onto the vehicle. So in this video, I also had some technical difficulties. You know, I forgot to turn on my microphone, uh, for one. So uh, I do some, you know, I'm, I use my hands with everything. So uh, I did not overdub it. I just decided to leave it as is. See if they, I think everybody can figure out exactly what I'm saying, right? And so, and then also in this video, I make a mistake while I'm assembling these two. And within, I'm going to say within 20 seconds of making that mistake, I realize I made the mistake. All right. So at that point, right before that point, I'm going to pop up a box and I'm going to say, did you catch that mistake? And that mistake, like I say, happened within the last few seconds. I'm not just saying, no, I made the mistake at the beginning of the video. And then at the end of the video, I'm saying, oh, what mistake did I make? No. I'm gonna, it's a small time frame. I just wanna see if you guys catch it because I'm, I'm expecting you guys to be here, right? I'm expecting you guys to help me out. So you're supposed to say, hey, Tony, you made a mistake. And I think you did. So that's why I put that in there. And I wanna also mention, um, you know, there's links and everything to all the tools and everything that I use. Nobody pays me. I buy my tool. Nobody sends me tools. No, I buy the tool. If I like it, I tell you. If I don't like it, I tell you. So there's links to the ones that I do like. I put the, uh, in, in the description below. Uh, no one pays me, like I said. And also, you know, these aren't how-to videos. You know, this is just how I did it videos. You know, this is my first time. So uh, they're very detailed. So I, I go through every single thing. So I do not cut out the bad parts. When I make a mistake, just like I said, I make the mistake. I keep it because you might make that mistake. So, you you know, it's just like a hello. I'll make the mistake so you guys don't have to. That's the whole process of this. And the details, because I've never done it before, I don't know what I'm going to need in the future. And I started the YouTube channel for myself, you know, just so I could document this process and put as much detail as I want on it. Then I'll let Google store it all for me because this is going to be a who knows how much, right? It started out as an oil leak. You guys remember that, it was a rear seal oil leak. And this is where I'm at, so that's why I know it's gonna take a lot of video footage, and I'm sorry for the, the extreme detail, but I think eventually it's, it needs to be out there, because I'll tell you what, you guys remember I did the thing on how not to buy bearings, right? And how not to buy bearings, it's, you, no one seems to know how you buy bearings, right? No one knows, I've contacted the two Mercedes places that I've been working with, and they tell me they're gonna get in contact with their uh, old timers, you know, in the back, and, and tell me exactly how you go about and how you identify what bearings you need. You know, I'm still trying to figure out, well, what thrust bearing do I need? There's two of them. How do I know which one? No one seems to know. This has been weeks now. I've contacted them twice to, I, you know, to bring this to their attention. It doesn't seem like Mercedes is able to help me. Um, I have gotten some help by people who have made, who have rebuilt Mercedes engines before, never the M117, 
But on the AMG, like I identified before, you know, they tell you right on the crankshaft. That's right, right on the snout of the crankshaft. They tell you red, green, blue, yellow, whatever the heck you need, right? And then on the block, it tells you. Well, <laughs> not in this case. So that is uh, one of my problems right now. I have no, no thrust bearing at all. And I do have some red bearings, but do I need blue bearings? No one seems to know. And uh, chances are, if it's like the AMGs and you're doing all that, like Tasso says, you probably have to mix red and blue to get the right tolerances, you know? So these Mercedes are so crazy, it's unbelievable, because the other manufacturers just have one bearing and then that's it, you know, that's pretty much what you're stuck with. So I don't know, you know, I mean, there's repair sizes, but there's just those sizes. You got your original, you got a repair size, that means you got to grind your crank, right? I can't buy the repair size. Right, so you can only buy the one size. That didn't fit too well. I may end up having to uh, get a hold of them and discuss this with that company. Hey, this video is already long enough, so I, I think I'm just gonna cut it right there. You guys see the problems that you're gonna be having. These are my problems. They're gonna be your problems if you're gonna be stepping into this thing, you know, unless you know, and if you do know, why don't you put it in the description because I'm hollering for help. I've been asking in all my videos, I ask online in the public forums and different places and you know, so this is where I'm at and this is how much information I've got, the same information you're gonna get. So good luck with your build, you know, that's all I gotta say. Let's see if there's anything else I have to do. Uh, at, my plan is now, you know, I'm sorry for this one here, this video taking so long, I had some things I had to get done, so. Um, but I'm picking back up, and my plan is this week to start deburring that stupid cylinder head, clean up the stuff that the, the machinist did not clean up. I'll put a link on, you know, that crazy stuff, um, and links to that. And uh, I'm going to deburr that, and I've already made a, a vacuum pressure tester, because we've already done the, uh, you know, the water test, and, you know, the gravity test, and, you know, the air test, and... So why not do like a shop would do and do a vacuum test? And you could do it for about 30 bucks. All right, it's not that expensive. So I'm gonna show you. I, I haven't, well, I made it. I haven't tried it yet, that's all. <laughs> I made the device. I have yet to try it because, you know. And I have a cool little way, I think, where you can um, take, uh, where you can actually do a vacuum test without installing your uh, seals. So that way there you can lap, and if it didn't work, you take it up, you know, and relap it again. You're not worried about banging back and forth on that, that, that. So, all right, that's all for another video. Like I said, this video is already too long. I had trouble cutting it up. You know, I started this video in, in, in what is it, February. So, you know, it's just a lot of footage I went through, and, well, you get the whole thing, so. All right, that's where we are for right now, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Well, now that you have everything all cleaned and ready to go, your surface areas are great. You want to check your surface area. If you've got one of those nice fancy bars, the nice, heavy, beautiful uh, straight edges, but I'm going to be using a two-foot square. Fits perfect across here. Uh, I'm going to check straight across, and then I have my feeler gauge onto the lowest, smallest one I have, so it's 0 .0015, that's the smallest, so I might as well start with that, and that's all you got to do is just try to fit it underneath there, and I can't, of course there's a hole there, so you know that's going to fit in the hole, but it doesn't fit across these bridges here. You can do the same thing like they do for a head, go crosswise. You don't want you don't want that thing rocking really.
just barely catches there, but it doesn't go under. So there's that side. That's why the, the other ones are better because they're, they're flat all the way. I'd say that's nice and straight. Well, it doesn't need any further machine work, that's for sure. So you remember our bags and take lower and then take upper. So we still need to clean these parts. It's, this is a very simple thing, you know, it's, I don't know what they call it. I can look it up, they're going to call it some kind of plate or something with throttle body or whatever. Um, so this electrical connection I know is new because I have the other one. So maybe I changed it at some point. And I have a bucket of clean soapy water. So there we go. this outside. Alright, so it's all washed. And, uh, but you now it's got like just some discoloration right there, but I don't think that matters at all. I don't now, this is labeled pins 1, 2, and 3. So 2 is in the middle. And number one is on the left when you're holding it upside down like this. So we're, we're going to be working with those two. That third pin is it, uh, probably, you know, the, the current that comes in. Probably 5 volts or something, I understand. It's a position sensor. And, you know, when things have black on it like this, I mean, sorry, yellow. That's saying, hey, don't touch this, don't touch this. Uh, but we have to check it. We certainly don't want to put the whole car together and find out that this doesn't work. The way that we're going to do that is we'll take our, our multimeter and just set it to ohms. And I have it um, audible, so... And then I'm going to have my beautiful assistant <laughs> come over here and I'm going to hold this at full open throttle. And she's going to hold this right here. And she's going to take the common and put it on number two, which is the center. So I'm going to hit number one. And we hear nothing. But let's close it to close. And it's on. Hear that? So I know the switch works. Right? We don't... Now I open it up a little bit. Not there. Not there. There it is. Right there. So you could actually get a feeler gauge in there and test the tolerances right there and actually adjust it. Uh, that's the reason why... That's the reason why this is has the uh, yellow on there because um, this has all been set. Right, so once once you have all that set, you do it all with a feeler gauge and all that kind of stuff. But it's been done because here's my old one. And I just ran a test on that one and verified that sure enough, it is dead. It does not function. All right, so this is our intake lower. So I put a little bit of WD-40 on that chain, on that spring. That's the reason why it's for the bag. Keep that in there, and then there's your intake lower for your throttle control here. I wanted to make note that um, I do have new vacuum lines, uh, but I don't want to change any of the vacuum lines right now. You notice they've kind of got their shape. It's just going to help us put it back together. Um, but at that time, uh, we can go ahead and change out 
to new vacuum lines. <clears throat> this is in our intake upper bag. So this is that broken piece, right? So I have a new one of those, and that's the part number for that. Right there, and that's that piece. And then I got a new one of these. Um, I and then there's the part number for that. Okay. And then I happen to have there's only one of these per car. If you can. There's the number on here. I'm not sure if that's the actual part number or not, but there's only one per car. And where that goes is on your A line, the one that we marked A when we were taking the car, uh, taking the engine out. This is labeled A. This is a green and white. It's, it would be a green striped white one. But that's where that one goes. Um, this one has a different number, but the exact number except for the last two digits. So in case we need that, we'll have that. Um, this other one, this is black and white. So this is actually what the new line would look like. Um, so that's just the discoloration. I like to just keep the discoloration if it's just fine, but I have that. And then this, this... The end of that actually goes into intake lower, and there's our final plug-in, right? When we go to assemble it, that's where that one there will go. And I'll want to point out, you see that white stripe? Now, Mercedes is kind of cool, right? If you notice here, this also has a white stripe. So those stay on the same side. So we'll put that all together and clean it up and get ready to assemble that part of it. Um, I'm just going through the box for the intake box where we have all our bolts and our parts as we went through things. I had purchased a new gasket for our cold start valve which is what this is. It's a Bosch cold start valve. This would sit on there like that exactly like what you see here there's where the gasket is and uh, everything else I've already cleaned so one of the first things I want to do is get rid of that washer that's sticking up on there right this little thing it, it, it is, uh, appears to be epoxied on there these are the only tools I'm going to use, this old screwdriver, a hammer, and a chisel, and I'm hoping that I can get that out of there. That's a close-up of it. You can see down inside there, it almost looks like, you know, it's multiple layers. You can see that epoxy all along that top edge there. Do you see how it looks like there's like, I don't know, it looks like it's going to be recessed and it almost looks like there's a, another washer under this washer almost. It's obviously not right. Well, let's hope. Tie it down. Let's try something a little bit narrower, maybe. I don't know if that's going to be any better.
Why would they put this on here? If this thing's all epoxied on there, I mean, it's going to be a nightmare to try to get off. And then I don't even know why it was put on there to begin with. It's time that we chase every one of these. So that is something I'm going to actually do. Let's go ahead and chase all these holes. Every single one of them need to be taken care of. This up here in the front, right? All these, those on that side, and this one right here. So we can just start with that one because I've already put it in there, but this one here is pretty clean. Now if you notice, that went all the way through. So that's another one that goes into the intake that goes all the way through. Should probably have some sealant put on there. Let's move to this next one here. It didn't go in too bad, so I'm surprised actually. I want to blow that out. You can see stuff coming out, but they're feeling much better now. So this darn thing is still driving me crazy. Well, it's going to be 112 degrees today, so I'm going to have to speed this up. There's no way my garage is going to stay clean, so I'm just well, that chipped right out. What do you know? So we got some of it out, finally. Don't want to mess up, you know, any surfaces, so. Well, I got a big chunk of it out. Try to split those two, right? This is a center punch, just trying to find out where the heck that is. Why did these guys do that, huh? There, there's some more of that stuff. It's epoxy, there's no doubt about it. You know, I thoroughly inspected the inside of this and, you know, it doesn't attach to anything. It's simply a fastener. So I'm not too much worried about around it or anything like that. But, you know, already I put a center punch in here and I still can't get that sucker to come up. You'd think a few blows like that and the thing would want to pop off. I can't even tell if it's got a different sound to it. It might be. There it is, guys. All right, we finally popped it out of there. This is the washer that came out of there. Look at the size of that beast. Finally, right? Finally, something went as going, you know, as planned. So I went to just, you know, start cleaning out that hole because you can see there's a lot of garbage in the backside of that you know, where the epoxy and everything is. And then I noticed that inside there, that's right, there's a washer inside there. So, you know, what they did is they epoxied this other one on top of this for some strange, odd reason. So now I have to decide which one of these washers are right. So, we documented this already when we pulled it out of the vehicle. This is our, our intake manifold box. And this is the front of the vehicle facing that way. And um, this is the side here that we just took this junk out of. 
And this over here is the side that we, you know, that was taken out. So I went to my box and this one has a washer, right? So I pull that washer out or pull the bolt out. There's the washer. And then I compare that washer with the washer that we just took off. And you know what? They're the same. They are the same in every way. So that's what happened. You can see. This is the one with the bolt. And that thing fits right in there just like that. Right, so now I'll take the other bolt from the other side here, which does not have a washer on it currently, even though the manual says there's no washer, I don't know. I can't, you know what? Yeah, we'll see, I'm gonna clean that bolt. I wanna make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Doesn't look great. Now let's see how that works. Oh yeah, see that? That's exactly how that's supposed to be. So then that way there, that, that hose that goes right up along here has clearance. All right, let's put this thing, to, well I gotta go clean it real quick and then we're gonna put things together. I'm gonna take a plastic bag and then call this intake upper unknown and put that oversized washer in there. You know, I mean sometimes you're gonna have extra parts but this time we know that this was an extra, right? That's why I wrote extra right there. Because it's not a part that's identified yet. Before I put anything together, the first thing I wanted to do is because when I, when I first took this apart and earlier in the video, you see I cleaned out these holes and I said I had a lot of issues, you know, with the holes. But, you know, you should run chases. It's, it's these uh, right here. All these, I'm, I'm chasing this with a chase, right? And uh, as well as everything from above, these, I'm just chasing all of that before I get started on it. The things that we're gonna need really, or at least I think I need, is I'm gonna use some dielectric grease. And that's just to help me assist put these rings on, right? If I didn't say so already, there's your part number. There's the gasket for that. That's going to go right onto there. This gasket, however, you can't buy. All right? So I think I already said that earlier. But, you know, there's a way that we can recondition this. Uh, or at least help us make sure that this thing seals properly. And that's by using a product like this. Uh, Tassos uh, told me about this. It's for cork, paper, and metal gaskets. And really, it's just going to help. It's a high temperature cement, basically. It's going to seal it. And I think that's going to help a great deal. The only problem, though, is, is the temperature. You know, I'm in Arizona, so the, the temperature for applying this is between 60 and 95 degrees. Well, it's already 100 degrees outside. It's 92 in my garage right now and I'm getting ready to stop because it's too hot. You're gonna need some lock tight because if you remember when we took these out, right, these had uh, a blue lock tight on it. So we're gonna make sure we do that. At least that's how it came out. You know, is it right? Probably not because not, we already know the people that are taking this thing apart is not paying attention. Certain things were done right, like if they sent it in to have like the balanced crank and all that kind of stuff or whatever the heck they did on the bottom end, who knows? I know there's a, it looked like there was a rod that had been replaced. All right, so let's go ahead and start assembling. Before I get started, I wanna clean it. I've got one of those clean room uh, towels and uh, some lacquer thinner. I've already cleaned, obviously. 
I have cleaned this thing like you can't believe already. But I bet you, see, that's just because aluminum oxidizes. And well, that's oxidation. I'm not putting this one on quite yet because, you know, that's for that big tube and then it's going to just get in our way. Here's what else we need, right? We're going to clean these two. Um, I've thoroughly cleaned this. You've seen it earlier. And I've even did more cleaning behind your back. You can't get things too clean. That's what they keep telling me. You can't get it too clean. Right? You can't get it too clean. And I, I'm telling you, I worked and worked and worked. And I still, as far as I'm concerned, cannot get that as clean as it could be. All right. So... Before, uh, now that I've kind of got everything cleaned up, uh, there's some choices I need to make here because uh, there was no sealant or anything in these, but they were in these two here. But I'm not so sure, you know, if was, it was blue, it could have been blue Loctite. Right, they don't want it rattling out of there, and it's also a sealant. Um, but Permatex also makes a high temperature thread sealant. I don't know what color it is. <laughs> I just saw it and thought, well, I should probably buy it. It couldn't hurt because there's other areas I see on the vehicle where bolts go all the way through, like in the front timing cover and things like that. And you certainly want to seal those things um, so I thought I would go ahead and open that up and see what's in there, what color it is. I'm probably going to use that instead. Uh, because, all right, this thing, it prevents leakage, rusting, corroding, and, but also when I read the, uh, when I read it, it says, note, Permatex thread sealant seals threaded metal fittings on hydraulic, pneumatic, fuel, and cooling. So I know I'm safe to use this product on here, and that's why I chose it. You know, originally I was going to use Loctite, but I, I think that that's a better choice. I don't have to put it on here. It don't go all the way through. There was no thread locker on there. I kind of feel like they put a little bit of something on there but I I'm not so sure you should it's a paper you know it's a paper gasket so I just don't think that that's a smart choice to put anything on there unless it's recommended we know that we need four of these with a washer so there we are so you've got this on this side And that's just how that thing's going to go on there. So now we're ready to assemble it. So these are those washers. It's a spring washer, so it's kind of a lock washer already. You don't need to put Loctite on here as far as I'm concerned. Right? So we're just going to line up these holes and get that thing started. And I'm just going to start it with this thing. There we go. Gonna finger tighten it for now. To tighten it, I'm gonna be using a qu quarter inch instead of a three eighths uh, because it fits. You can actually get the wrench here. Let's see. I'll put it over here. And I'll show you. you. Can actually get the wrench or get this thing to fit on here. So I think we're gonna use that. And then we, their Mercedes uh, doesn't give any torque specs, not for anything here. So we're gonna use this chart, and uh, these are M5s, and they're 8.8. .8. I verified that, let's see if you guys can see the same. Not sure if I can get this to focus like that right there. 
but that's an 8.8 .8, and it's an M5 so the maximum torque on an 8.8 .8, according to the chart is 5.9 newton meters so I'm going to be using a torque wrench here let's see I'm going to be using a Tecron torque wrench it's a, it's a nice nice little torque wrench it snaps in there it's a nice little thing great for bikes and motorcycles and things like that but it's also going to work great for this this and a little extension so according to the chart then it's going to be 5.9 I have my torque wrench sent to 5.6 I could go to 5.9 but you know according to that that's maximum I'm just going to kind of snug it up all the way around first before I torque it down. Kind of get some even pressure. that it's not much torque that's why these little torque wrenches are really nice to have it's got a nice click to it I like this better than my real expensive digital one look at that how nice that feels and you don't need to go click 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 I see guys doing that all the time don't do it you're gonna ruin your torque wrench there you go. That's all you got to do. So we got that on there. Now, it's this, right? That's the thing that goes on right there. And I need to run out there and spray paint it. Now, unfortunately, you know, it was super, super hot. And then I woke up to come out here. I wanted to get this done because I know I have to do this between 60 and 90 I think that's what it was roughly um, and it was raining so I think it might still be raining I, I might not even have a place to spray this I'm not gonna spray this in the garage you know so all right but I'm gonna go get that done I'm gonna go check it out and either I'm coming back and we're gonna get that mounted right away you know I changed my mind I think 5.6 just seemed a little bit light and I kind of tested it so I'm gonna go ahead to go to 5.9 so, just thought I'd let you guys know because you can see it did, there's not much difference between 5.6 and 5.9 right I mean can the tool even tell the difference because it doesn't seem like I'm turning it at all I guess I too very little. There it is. All right. So 5.9. So, and again, before I go out and spray that with that copper gasket cement, let's go ahead and check this out. I'm kind of curious. And she, it's, we've got to be ready for it. So, because there's a, a specific dry time on this. Um, that you need to put the stuff together. You can wait five minutes until it becomes tacky and then you apply the surface. But it says as soon as possible and within two hours, so I guess we have some room. Well, I poked a hole in it and, well, it's white. <laughs> See that little white dot there? So but you know according to what it says it's for vibration and all that so you know seals tapered we're on this side the high performance <clears throat> excuse me seals uh, tapered metal pipes threads and fittings against leaks vibration and shock so uh, that's what we're gonna do I think we're all ready I'm gonna wipe that down with my other rag here and some lacquer thinner That 
guy is ready to go. And uh, because I'm painting this with that other stuff, it should be clean as well. And I'll make sure it's dry, lacquer thin, or dries really quick. It's great for, for prep. Plus, I've cleaned it already. There we are. You guys know that I don't, I don't sell tools. I don't do anything. No one pays me. Nobody pays me to endorse their tools. Um, but like it says in the description, you know, when I use something, I tell you about it and I tell you whether or not I like it. So I can tell you what, you know, this torque wrench, heck, top notch, nice. That's worth every single penny. I love it, right? It's just a fantastic, beautiful, beautifully engineered. All right. But we also, of course, use that this little hex stuff. You know, I've, I've broken hex, right? You guys see it in my other videos. And But this has been a really great set. So that's the one I'm using right there. But these are the quarter inches. That's 3 8 And look at this big old puppy comes with it as well. <laughs> So I, I don't know what the price is, but it was to me it was worth it. I just thought I'd let you guys know. I try to tell you whether or not I like what I'm using. And, and when I don't like it, I let you know that too. All right. So I have placed this on there. That is tacky. It'll help installing. I think. There it is. So that's on there nicely. And now this thing here, right, has to attach like this, right? There it is. Okay. And then we have these two. So, it's been about, I don't know, eight minutes or so. And this one here attaches right there. I don't want to use a torque wrench to get things started. So again, my torque wrench is set for 5.9. Newton meters. Snug that one up first. There, that one. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? You guys, you're supposed to be helping me. <laughs> I didn't put the thread sealant on there. So. I mean, I have it sitting right here, right next to me, and I have my notepad to tell me step by step what to do. And guess what? So the instructions say to stay off the first thread and then go up, you know, three quarters of the thread. So and you don't have don't have to cover it entirely. That's another thing it says. Just basically like that. That'll that'll do it. You know, and then you can just take a little piece of paper, which I don't have. <laughs> and there we go. You can tell that that's plenty. I think, right?
you're just trying to seal it and that's enough and you know the well the bolts don't go all the way through but the hole does this is a, a real old old craftsman I got in the 70s and I, my little ball sometimes gets stuck I got it you can just take this thing apart and fix it 5.9 that's what we got. I can tell you what, this thing was a lot tighter than that when I took it apart. Right? I mean, that don't seem tight enough to me at all. So now this thing's going to take up a lot more room that we're putting it together, but you have to you, you have to put this thing together in order to put the top on. And, you know, if I don't do it, I can't get this video done. So, again, 5.9. There it is. Just doesn't seem like much to me. Let's gather things up and figure out the next step. I moved over to my little bench here, and so this is the bottom, which we just completed putting together. And then there's our top laying on its side, and I cleaned everything really well and made sure that I have everything ready to go. And around that little edge there, we got to put these little rubber pieces in which I've got over here on the side. I've washed them. And, uh, I mean, they go on there pretty darn easy. I probably don't have to put this dielectric grease on there, but I'm choosing to do so just to make it a little bit easier. Um, there's no special direction that these go on. There's nothing here that tells me otherwise. Well, I've got this thing here ready. I'm ready to put that on top of it. So let's take it. All right, so this is it. It's all cleaned up. You can see the surface looks nice. This is the best I can do as far as cleaning the inside of it. Let me get this situated here. So I've cleaned it. And uh, should be ready to go. I should probably see if this is going to fit. So from the top, that looks all right. We'll look at the bottom down here in a minute.
Ah, darn it. Knocked it. There we go. That's on to this, to that. So, it's just mounting. Let's go ahead and check it out here. It looks great. We'll take we'll take a closer look once I get them all snugged up and everything. Um, these are M6s. I'm going to double check it. My eyesight's terrible, but yes, this is an M6 and it's an 8.8. .8. So it's 9.9 .9 newton meters. And that's what I set this little guy to again. I mean, it doesn't seem like much torque, does it? I have it at 9.9. .9. Just a little, just a little bit. I can't believe that, I guess it, I wasn't, I because that turned. But still, right? Really? What do you guys say about that? All right, the more I look at this, the more I can understand why, you know, 9.9 .9 Newton meters is enough. I mean, we're metal on metal, right? We're not gonna go any farther. And there's really no point in it. These things don't really, you know, snug up tight or anything. You know, they, they're kinda, you can even kinda move them a little bit, right? A little bit up and down, kinda. You can see it kinda move, right? A little bit, so. But everything is sealed nice, I think. They all look good, even way back in there. So, I would say that that part of it's good. We have other things we need to do. This is the old one. Well, actually, this is the one we're going to use. And then you remember I labeled it as intake lower. So, you know, and then that would go in over there. But the thing is, is that I'm not going to install any of these uh, because I broke it when I removed it from the, from, the, from the heads. I end up breaking that one, so there's no sense in putting them on. They don't need to be put on at this stage. But when you do put these things on, now the guy who did it before me forgot it, but... There's a ceiling ring, right, for each one of these. Every one of them. It's the, it's the same part number pretty much for all of them. And uh, 
I'm not going to put these parts on, right? Not, there's no sense in it because I'm going to end up breaking it if I do. So I'm not going to. I'm going to go over and put these in the box over there. Take this with me as well. All right, so I'm going to put this in the box over here. And this is the intake lower with the spring, right? So that's all part of it's just the just the vacuum lines for that. And here's your EGR. And the gasket, actually this gasket is not for that. I, this gas is, gasket actually are just arrived, so I have a new gasket. I haven't taken it out of the box yet. Um, but this particular steel gasket they have. And there's your A and double A. So uh, I forget what this is for. I did a video on, on testing it, but it, it goes on to the intake manifold. All right, you guys. So, I mean, that's finally something was kind of put back together, I guess you could, you could say. At least it looks like progress, right? And I went ahead and just stuck this back on there. Again, it's loose. You know, the, I just don't see any point of it. But now everything's on there the way it needs to be, and it's ready to be installed on the vehicle. You've got your EGR line all in. Everything's tight and sealed and so I think that this actually pretty much does it the only difference is you guys are going to install yours I don't know when I'm going to install mine all right guys thanks for watching hey the next next video I think I'm, I'm going to be deburring those cylinder heads and then I'm going to be lapping it and I'm going to put together I already did uh, um, I made a tool a vacuum tester because you know I can't you can't rely on any machinist or anything like that around here to help you or do anything right. So we're going to do everything ourselves. That's in, or I am. I don't know why I and a lot of other people make videos say we. I, I, you know, I get it. You guys are on board, but there's nobody here really helping me. <laughs> I'm all alone over here. There's nobody comes in my garage. I'm just just me. Just sad, lonely me. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next video.